Dear Sir or Madam, I am Dr. Till Steinmeier, and we have been asked again and again what the difference is between inosphoresis, also known as therapeutic apheresis, and immune absorption. The difference is explained relatively simply and briefly. The therapeutic apheresis, that is inosphoresis, is carried out with the TKM58 filter. This filter has been proven to remove environmental toxins, inflammatory mediators, and it also filters out relatively non-specifically malformed autoimmune antibodies. Many chronic diseases are based on chronic inflammation, so there is an imbalance between damage and repair in the body. Damage can come from stress and pollutants, while repair processes require the right nutrients and rest. There can be a variety of reasons why regeneration is limited. In many cases, there is no holistic view of the patient, which is why we would like to explain this point later. The TKM58 filter for therapeutic apheresis or inospherosis can be a conceivable approach due to a wide range of leached substances for a variety of diseases. It primarily washes out environmental toxins such as herbicides, pesticides, microplastics, toxic metals and chemicals. Inflammatory mediators that can perpetuate chronic inflammation are also reduced, as you can read here, in a recent study looking at long COVID. The same study reports a reduction in malformed autoantibodies involved in autoimmune reactions. You can find the source in the video description. Spike proteins, infection toxins, tumor-associated proteins and herpes viruses, such as Epstein-Barr viruses, can also be reduced. Immune absorption, on the other hand, is highly specific and filters out the autoimmune antibodies in a more targeted manner. For diseases where the focus is on inflammation, we prefer inospheresis. In diseases where autoimmunity is paramount, we prefer immune absorption. In the run-up to inospheresis, or immune absorption, laboratory parameters should be used to determine whether an individual attempt at therapy makes sense and is appropriate. Classic laboratory parameters that can be checked in advance are the CRP, of course also the blood sedimentation rate, the interleukin-1, 6 and 8, the tumor necrosis factor alpha. Before immune absorption, one should check the autoimmune antibodies, including the ANA anti-nuclear antibodies, possibly AMA anti-mitochondrial autoantibodies or the entire range of rheumatism antibodies or autoantibodies specific to the respective autoimmune disease, which every doctor knows. After immune absorption, immunoglobulins may need to be replaced after treatment, which is not the case for therapeutic apheresis. Apheresis should remove the acute load of substances that block the regeneration and self-healing of the body as far as possible. But it is also very important to understand where these substances originally came from. Important factors are the immune system, nutrition and intestinal health, mitochondrial performance, the autonomic nervous system and the body's natural detoxification. It is therefore very useful to consider the many possible factors of a disease before considering treatment with apheresis. Knowledge of apheresis procedures is constantly evolving. Therefore, theoretical and practical experience is very important for the doctor. If you found the video helpful, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.